Roll call. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members present, uh, two absents. And welcome to the January 23rd all day session of the department head meetings. Okay, uh, just a couple of things. We, I have a note that we are going to meet on Tuesday, and I believe it's the. What's next Tuesday? I'm looking. I had it right in front of me and I lost it. Sorry. Next Tuesday is the 28th. We're going to meet uh, at 6 p.m. on the 28th with the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee, a joint meeting. It's only about a half hour. It's not a very long meeting to discuss budgets. Don't look at me like that. Um, I would encourage you to attend, but it's, you know, again, we're going to meet so many times it's going to be very, yes. I believe it's at six o'clock. Uh, Where? We have a uh, executive session of labor council scheduled for uh, six this Tuesday. I'll, I'll repeat. I'll repeat it over the white people. Yeah, I think that was actually this Tuesday. When Emerson can't make it to the next one, so we we'll have, have to, to shake it up. Right. Okay. Yep. That's and and I'll let you know if it's been canceled. That's all I've got so far from the the joint conversation was that we'll meet Tuesday six, at least about a half hour. It's uh, Where? Probably here. I haven't got a location yet, but I'm going to assume here because we're going to follow it up with a selections meeting. Uh, and then we'll meet again Wednesday next week because we obviously lost a week in the process. So at this point, because Mr. Uh, Sullivan has the schedule in front, we have to try to get through this today and ask all the mm -hmm. questions. So in front of you, you have the budget draft. You should have detail for each department. And if you have questions, please ask as we're going through the process. Do you want to wait till the end, or do you want to just ask as they come? Um, I, what I would ask is if it's pertinent, let's, let's do it at that moment. If it's more, <coughs> more sort of, the, doesn't need to be hit for that exact line, then let's wait for the end, if that makes sense. Okay. And just, just to make sure we're all on the same page, we have a brand new draft budget. Are we all excited? Yeah. And the number of... Miraculously enough, that's the old one. Don't you have that? Not yet. Uh, the uh, new number, I believe, is 2.493. Yeah, and we, yesterday, if I, I may, we just received the, up the first uh, version of the cherry sheet. The governor's aid on school is much, well, it, should, it is much lower. It's, uh, we're probably lower by... Uh, about 150,000. The general government aid was increased over the estimates, so uh, <coughs> it's going to be interesting to see where where we end up with those. So we'll have to we'll have to update some of the revenue numbers. But like I said, that didn't come out till yesterday afternoon, and it's not in the cherry sheet format yet. So. Well, I'm de I'm destined to lose my voice somewhere early on in the session, so. Uh, Maryland. Yeah, he's going to bring it to us shortly. Okay, he had it, I thought when I handed the books, they had a budget. Time, but apparently, we're going to do this a little different. All right. So uh, let's turn it over. I believe first up is the water sewer enterprise, as we call it here. So do you have information for us, or do we, is it in the book already? Yeah. It is in the book. I don't think guys changed too much from the from the last one, but um, the only two people that'd be missing would be uh, would be Marilyn and Ilana. I, I Jeff. Actually, Jeff, I, I got her. <laughs> I know the face mud. not the name. Just use mud. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Water Pollution Enterprise Fund would be at the end of the pages. That would be uh, 
you look at about pages 30, I believe, 38. Here they come. They hear me. I have a work bunch of control personnel. It's on uh, 39. 38. That's all I got. This is what I got. Thank you. See, now you never forget it. Just a quick question, Derek. The, the uh, principal on debt, that's paid out of our general. Should, is that paid out of the sewer enterprise fund? I would think that. Uh, yes, it, it is because that's the uh, that's the debt for the for the betterments and such in those projects. So that that is actually separate from the uh, from the general fund debt. So when you see our debt schedule uh, on the general fund. That is that is separate from the debt schedule for the sewer enterprise fund. So this is for the betterments. This is not for the actual sewer infrastructure. Yeah, it probably would have been solved. It probably would have been for the infrastructure when we rebuilt the plant. When was that? Uh, it started. Two thousand five was completed. So part of the debt is for the actual plant, a lot of engineering costs, and then actually all the other projects we've been doing, the one through twelve, uh, the comprehensive wastewater management plan. That's all the debt all encompass. Two point six. 2.6 is the is the principal. Yes, yeah, 750 is the interest. 150 is the short-term interest. Yes. So it comes out to your math is better than mine. 3.4, 3. Point something. Okay. Is the total debt? Okay. Debt and debt service, as I understand it. Do you have any, you want to you want to talk a little bit before we start asking questions? Just give us a little update on what you've done this year. Maybe what if you've done anything different or what what's in your numbers that is different than it was in the past? I, there's really not a whole lot different, other than the fact we're adding capital expenses into the budget. We've got a line now we call capital. What we plan on doing in each year. I think 2015 budget we've included two hundred thousand dollars for capital improvements. Uh, we know we have much more improvements than that, but $200,000 is realistic. Um, it's to handle the immediates. Uh, clarifiers need to be rehab rehabbed, and we've got some generators that we absolutely need to replace. Um, so that includes, that's included in that $200,000. So we're going to take $200,000 in 2015 and make those improvements right off the top. Um, we're also going to take some money and, and do a comprehensive, uh, or actually what's called ca capital uh, plan. It's a long-term plan. We're going to have an engineer do it actually do it it's time to do a capital improvement plan <laughs> officially and do it and, and uh, we're doing evaluation ourselves as to uh, our equipment its life expectancy and where we are in that life expectancy to give us some idea of what we're going to need in the future we're also looking at our infrastructure and what we're going to have to do for infrastructure as an example we have some areas like swiss beach that has some issues we need to really address that in the long term that'll be a five or ten year capital improvement plan and we'll hire a company to do that so uh we're going to put some money in the budget for that also so those are only two things that we're looking at differently um, at the plant itself we're really tying into access program and and uh doing our own accounting in-house to give us a better idea where we are on a daily basis so it's been working pretty good too so uh, we're just trying to get a handle on things like everybody else. It's, it's been crazy for us, so I think we're doing a better job of understanding. And once we get that understanding, then we can do a better job of reducing. So um, that's where we are. Well, just, just a couple things before yep. we... Um, we don't have a breakdown of the revenue, but I want to, I want to see what that 7 in the budget. You have 7.145... Sorry, 145.528. We need, what do you, what we need, need a breakdown of where that's coming from. Um, well, I, I was just, we got a, a, a toilet we're going to set up in Main Street. Just kidding. Let me give you an idea. He's got copies of the record. All right. So we thought it was a good idea with the fire department. So I was thinking that this toilet is set Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to work. I, I, not this year. That's, this is, I wanted to give it to you. That's actually 2.4, but I want to show you this 2.5 and the other is a typo. So I want to give you that. That's 2.4, not 2.6. Okay, so you yeah, add it up. So just to show you, that's the revenue. 
we were trying to get it from. Ah, here we go. Oh, no, I don't want to be Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> I like this term already, certified retained earnings. Not sure I'm a fan of it, but I like the title just the same. Let me, uh, before, just as far, because you're talking about revenues, we're in the middle of an EDU audit. And uh -huh. if you look at, it says EDUs, we're factoring 214 for this budget. As of this second, we're up to 231 and count, uh, 9,031 and counting. Uh, in our audit, we're finding properties that weren't properly charged. Some weren't being charged at all. Uh, some that were being overcharged. So we're really making all these adjustments. So we're gaining almost daily. So right this very second, we're up to 9,031. And I think I just got a, this morning, I think I had another update which I believe was 9,037. So you look at, this is based on 9,114 nine EDUs. That number's climbing, so that's, we're gonna readjust that, and that's gonna affect the income. So I just wanted to point that out to you. So at this point, if I look at no retained earnings, is that where we're going for, Derek? We're not using retained <coughs> earnings in the revenue? We actually, we don't know where, where we're going to head with that. It sounds crazy, but we've got the we've got the EDU audit and we have the DOR coming in as well. Okay. We can use some of those retained earnings to keep on stabilizing it. It's not necessarily recommended, um, but it's going to, we're going to have to make that decision with how we move forward. So that's why you'd see the two options. Okay. So that we'll come back to that later, correct? Yeah. All right. We're going to, all right. So any questions on the sewer enterprise? Anybody? Go for it. <laughs> I want you to explain to me, I'm new, so I want you to explain to me what no retained earning means, some retained earning. What's retained earnings? Are these your amounts of money that you keep in reserve? Although reserve is a bad term, that I shouldn't have used reserve. Is this your, what is this 914? 9,014. 9, Those are the 9,014 up here. It's, it's the actual EDUs. That's, so that's what, each house. That at, well, it's so each house, businesses. Some businesses have more application than others, uh, you know, depending on the business. Um, gosh, I don't know if I have an EDU sheet with me, but we have a 1996, the, the Sewer Commission has established an EDU rate per structure, per user. Um, so if you're a business, um, if it's, it's one EDU per 10,000 square feet if you retail business, restaurants are, I believe it's one EDU per 12 um, seats in the restaurant, then we decide whether it's, it's uh, uh, paper or if it's uh, actual glassware because of washing. Uh, laundromats have a specific, it's one point EDU per wash machine. Homes are one EDU per single family home. If you have a two family, the whole nine. So that, that encompasses that 9,014. It's all the sewer used in the town of Wareham, and those are the total EDUs that we're charging. Right. So what, what is no retained earnings? And some retained earnings, it's both the same number. What, is, what does that mean? What is no retained earnings? Retained earnings are what the Department of Revenue certifies at the end of the year as a surplus, whether it's from extra revenues or expenses. It's the equivalent to the town's free cash. Okay. So you can put some of that back in to help stabilize the funds. What the Only rate users... Funds, though. Only the enterprise. Only the enterprise fund. What the rate users probably don't understand is over the last four years, their funds have been subsidized. The EDU rates should have been higher. However, we have put retained earnings <coughs> back in there to keep them lower. It's an artificial lowering. Okay. Uh, so that's what the retained earnings, probably a better usage of those. Although you can use them to lower the rates as we have, it would be for the infrastructure to keep up on it. Some, you know, somewhere down the line, everybody's EDU or their cost per gallon, if we go to that measure, will be increased because over the last few years, we've used monies for infrastructure to keep people's payments down. Okay. So it, instead of seeing a whole bunch of retained earnings, some retained earnings, you might take a little bit out to keep the rate down, but that you won't make a decision on any of that until you come back with the DOI audit that says 
Go to meters as opposed to an EDU rate? No, tie in bond is doing that, and we're going to have workshops with, uh, with the stakeholders as well. So it'll be the sewer commissioners, it will be those people that have sewer businesses that are, that are sewered as well, and try and see what's the, what's the most appropriate manner in which we would have the, uh, to uh, portion out the cost, let's say. Because again, as uh, the tie in bond report said, a gallon from uh, from a resident isn't necessarily the same as a gallon of industrial waste. <laughs> Costs more to treat the industrial. Uh, and when we're looking at this, we're trying to figure out how we're going to keep this going because, you know, we may not have retained earnings in the future if there's if there's uh, larger issues, if there's bigger breakdowns. So, you've always heard me say that I don't think we should balance the general government on the uh, one-time <laughs> revenues and that is essentially what retained earnings are so okay got it just I want to mention something before anybody gets going at town meeting what I'd like to see as an appendix to our uh, book is the breakdown because everybody just sees the, the two numbers on the budget for for the water pollution control what I like to have is have a sheet, this sheet, and the actual budget for the water pollution control as an appendix, so that they can see that. Because I don't think we've ever done that at town meeting. That I think it's critical yeah, with the revenues and such in there, and everything. Because then, then, then we have the numbers up there that they're voting on, and then <coughs> the back, backup for what it's going to be. And we'll just put it in as an appendix. Everybody on the committee think that's a good idea to yeah. show people. All right. Yeah, I think we. I think that's a great idea, and I, we should probably hold a meeting on that or uh, ahead of time because uh, I think it's. I love loved what happened last town meeting was we got the information out ahead of time, uh, we spoke about it, and I think a lot more people were informed. So I think if we can also have a, a meeting on that, which I'm sure we will with the town meeting, hopefully it will get more of the message out. And uh, persons that are asking the question, maybe their, their neighbors will be able to answer it if they've seen it. So. Well, we have to have a public hearing for the finance committee at some point. And when we have that, that's something we'll bring up. I think, I don't want to say we'll bring up ad nauseum, but we will bring it up several times because I think that's been one of the things that have been missing in the past. And, and it's critical that we put it out there because I, we're not trying to hide anything. We just want to make sure that they have all the information. Any more questions? Yeah, yes. yeah, but on a town meeting floor, you vote on two numbers, right. budget, uh, the um, salaries and expenses, right? Right. Yeah, you just don't want to leave the, um, we wouldn't want to leave the um, impression that they, they can act, sit in, and pick off these different numbers and, you know, and, and change and the motions. Two numbers, right, 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 right. Yeah. And, but this will be an appendix. It won't be sitting out there as a, as a part of the budget. We will explain that. Yeah, we're, we're, in a way, we're ripping off the Band-Aid. Let's say we're making some changes uh, from the, potentially from the EDU. We're also changing the manner in which uh, the, the, let's call them in-kind costs are handled. It used to be a revenue on the general government side, and it's uh, from available funds, and technically it shouldn't be. That should be the enterprise fund is a business so it should have all the charges and all the revenues as associated to a business and I think that will that will help us out and change a lot of the um, perception of money slowing back and forth so. okay. anyone else yes um, the uh, electricity costs yes 505 yes what, where do we stand on the solar installation and what potential does that help to reduce that cost? We're, we're at contract right now. Uh, we've uh, entered into an agreement or we're negotiating with Nextera, which is the largest uh, producer of power in, in the United States. They've bought some companies. And their solar side, we're at right now trying to come to terms or agreements on uh, building a solar field that will generate enough electricity to power the uh, the, the plant itself. So we're going to go behind the meter at this point in time because of the uncertainties of the new SRX program, they call it SRX2. Um, there's some preliminary things, there's some drafts, but we haven't got anything official. So it makes sense at this time to move behind the meter. So we're, we're at right now, I saw the contract, it's at the, the consultants, they're hashing it out because the company is based out of California, with offices locally, so we're hashing out, then from that point we'll go to the attorneys, the attorneys will do their thing, <coughs> 
and then we're hoping to be up and running soon. So we're, we're moving forward. We haven't stopped. It's, um, it's been when, a challenge. When would you hope to be? They're, I, to be optimistic, they're telling me this summer. That one uh, one of the, uh, for the Borrega Solar said this spring. But um, you know how that goes. I'm thinking this summer we should be up and running. We don't have a contract right now. Signed. No, we're right now we're in the process of working that contract. When that contract is signed, there's a lot of language in it that has to be worked out. And I'm not a lawyer, so forgive me. So the lawyers are going to do their thing. I really, I'm not getting into it. But we've, we've agreed. We've had a bunch of meetings. We've had, and actually have some videos of those interviews. And so we have the interviews. We, this company has been selected. The RFP pro, RFQ process is completed. And so now we're at negotiation. So, but you're not anticipating any revenue from that this year or any reduction in electric costs? I, I, I cannot say that for certain 2015 budget but i am anticipating up and running by 2015 i have no idea what those numbers are going to be so they're not you don't reflect here so Wait, I, but if you said you're up and running by this summer yeah that's I, the whole fiscal year yes Eight. if i if it is then at that time i'll have negotiated numbers i don't have those right now so maybe there could be an adjustment made as we get into the fiscal year but to project the fiscal year as the budget is the best guess we have of all of the facts that we have in front of us to project those numbers in i can't do that so you're not going to see any numbers reflected That's a potential weak here. spot in the budget or potential it could be, it opportunity could, in the budget. That's right. It could be an opportunity in the budget that we're not seeing now because I don't have those in front of me. You just know that it's out there. Yeah, I think it'd be inappropriate at this time to, to factor in those revenues. It's sort of the... Um, who knows what could happen they could they could start digging there and you could find a, a burial ground god god willing nothing like that happens so until that until the solar field is up and running we have all the contracts we wouldn't do any sort of revenue calculations until then into the budget because again there's just too much that could go wrong well it certainly behooves us to put it on a fast track to try to get it done because mm -hmm. that's the only revenue Opportun only opportunity I see to, to reduce the operating costs. It's one of them, absolutely. We're also, the 28th, we're going to Long Island. We'll look at some other ways of handling grease. We take grease in. You can see it's in the budget. We generate revenue. Uh, there's an opportunity to look at a system that can even generate more revenue. So we're looking at all kinds of ways to generate revenue, cut costs. It's something that, you know, we're constantly doing. So as we get those numbers and those answers, we'll bring them forward. But right now it's all, there's a lot of things happening out there that we're trying to take advantage of. Thank you. Um, with regard to the personnel, the listings that you have here, I know it's just a different operation, a different organizational chart than what we looked at last year. Mm -hmm. um, are you fully staffed, and are these positions all fully, they're, they're being funded in the budget, do we have people that are in all these positions at the moment? Yes. Okay. And that's sufficient? Yes. Um, it, for we, DEP. For, I want to, uh, <laughs> this is, it's working. We're talking to DEP. We have a, we're mandated wastewater by DEP rules and regulations to have specific staff for specific grading of a plant. We're a grade six facility with uh, what we call BNR, biological nutrient removal. So they give us the guideline. We're technically a person short, but I think we've made that up because uh, we're, we're, we're meeting our hour requirements and we're doing some things like we've um, got skater, if you will. We've got um, our computers checking some pump stations. We've requested them to, to accept that and allow it. They have. So no sense in hiring somebody else if we're working what we have. So this budget encompasses everybody that's there working now. We have them. I'm not going to expand Wait, it. Wait, you're using remote technology to monitor these things? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Dick Paulson's jumping up and down. He's so happy about absolutely. that. Absolutely. And, and we're increasing that increasing that absolutely. <laughs> absolutely great and then my next question is I don't see anybody specifically listed in bookkeeping here I know you're, you've been working hard to yes it's our together. it's actually one of the full-time positions um, to, to give an example that's all she does all day um, this is the bookkeeping it talks about revenue it talks about our, our okay. sewer revenue our expenses up to the minute and this is what she does full-time so that's that number one full-time department assistant that's all she does is works here on the bookkeeping part of it it's it's been a great help again thank you for a six million dollar business we'd like to know that somebody is actually yes, doing that absolutely so those those four department assistants are that's office yes okay 
Yes, that's administration. Yes. Thanks. No, absolutely. That was, that was, we did revenue. We did revenue and, and I know that Guy is looking to increase revenues any way he can. Yes. We did personnel. Now on expenses, we did electricity. Mm -hmm. um, I know we said you told, spoke to the line on capital additions. What's the 125000 for equipment and the 20000 for buildings? 25,000 for equipment is generally speaking under that category. Um, it, it, there's pumps, um, the motors, um, uh, control circuits, uh, control panels, anything to do with the actual moving of fluid. And so that's the equipment we use on a daily basis. So uh, we put that's funded for that reason. Um, the 125 equipment is, is for all those things. Um, there's just, and, you know, and that's, that's a good question as far as the person in charge because what we're doing now is every penny we spend goes somewhere. So we're hoping that with this tracking, we can be more certain where our money is going and, and learn how to be more frugal and, 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 uh, and do a better budget. But that 120, generally speaking, it's all our pumps, all our motors, all our control panels, anything to do with operation of, uh, of a pump station and moving the fluid from one spot to the next. That's Thank what you. that is. And 20000 for building is exterior things, you know, gutters and things like that that constantly need repair. You're putting money into your budget to repair the building? Yes, we are. That's we really exciting. are. You can see, I, got, I wish I brought some pictures, but you can see if you're right around town, you'll see some pump stations. And, you know, you'll see the aesthetics last. I had somebody complain about the building still look a little shabby. But I said to them, we just spent $45,000 inside because we have to move the product. So the pumps are our priorities, the electricals are our priorities, our control, you know, how we control the, the, the floats, if you will. Um, you know, those are the things that are priority, the, the air exchange systems, and then we get to the building. So when you see us get to the building itself, it looks better, know that everything inside has been taken care of first. Thank you. The WPCF capital addition at $200,000, mm -hmm. Savings account, so to speak, to it's just money in the budget for specific capital improvement. Uh, this year we're going to use it for, um, uh, we, we got three clarifiers, it's going to be $50,000 per unit to rehab, we're going to do that. We need some generators, uh, generators of $50,000, so we're going to take that money and specifically put it towards generators and the, um, uh, and the clarifiers. So what we're hoping to each year is, is capital improvement that should be $200,000 a year going forward. And this will become, when the capital improvement plan is completed, the numbers will be hotter. But right now we're taking $200,000 and we're doing these improvements because we know we need them. Will there be anything left over after this? No. Uh, actually, it's not enough. I, I figured this year I needed $800,000, but we're going to stretch that out. But So every penny will be used to do clarifiers and generators this year in 2015. Every penny. Okay. One more. Sure. Um, Outside contractors, tell me what they are. Uh, they're outside contractors, they, they do a lot of different things. Um, we've got, we, we use um, uh, pump trucks. Right now I've got a pump truck pumping out the Minot Forest uh, Elementary School. Somebody hit the pole, that station has no power. So I'm pumping constantly to bring that to, to, to the state, to the uh, treatment plant. That's a cost, that's an outside contractor. Anytime I talk to an engineer, that's an outside contractor. If I hire somebody to do something, right now we had uh, a company called uh, Wilkerson's, we've got three blower, uh, uh, boilers to heat the facility. One went down, they're there repairing that while they're there and having a look at the other ones. So anything to do that we're not doing is considered outside contractors. One last question, mm -hmm. when we were down there touring the plant, we had that old truck. Mm -hmm. And I remember you spoke about maybe getting that truck replaced. Is that in here? No, it's in last year's budget, $100,000 in last year's capital. But right now we're writing the RFP for it because it's going out. So that's where we are with that right now. So and, and in last year's budget? Yes, it's in this work. The present budget we're in, the 100000 is going to cover that. This is a sucker truck? Here you go. Yes, it's a VAC contract that goes out and suckers out the different things. So that's in our budget. And we're right now at RFP with it because we're going to buy a used one. So right now we're in RFP with it and it's going to, we're going to get out there and get all the bids and and take the, take the best deal for the town. Yes. That just brought up a quick point, Derek. I have a question. So when somebody hits a pole like that, do we, and it causes us additional costs, do we get to collect under their insurance? We will, so we will alert Maya, and they'll subrogate against the other's okay. insurance company. Good. And now for the big question, and I'm going to preface this with a little bit of history for those who haven't ever heard the term administrative fee. 
I'm going to wait for lightning to strike me down. Okay. <laughs> Long time ago, there were fees coming out of this account. There, as Guy and Derek have mentioned, this is an enterprise fund. It has to be fully self-sufficient. All the revenues that come in have to pay for all the expenses. That's how it goes. But that being said, it's still part of the town, and it relies on certain aspects of the town. When there are problems, the police may be involved, the Board of Health may be involved, but certainly the town administrator spends plenty of time on it, and we do billing through the town. So there are other charges that fall over onto the town side. Those were at one point called administrative fees. They were also lumped in with all of the health insurance costs and everything else, and they just did this lump sum on the budget that was called administrative fees, and it was about a million dollars. And it was deemed to be some immoral charge because it shouldn't be double charging the taxpayers. So we did a good job of breaking things out so that there are actual real fees, which are the direct costs. Am I using the right term? For the health insurance. Health um, insurance, and retirement, retirement FICA, those benefits. Uh, workers' comp, yeah. right, insurance. And yeah, which flow through the town system. So th and this is what Derek's talking about billing between the two entities. Yeah. Billing, all right, transfer of funds. What's your accounting term? I don't know, we'll have to. Uh, we got, we'll get into that afterwards, but, but that being the background, I see a line here now that says administrative expense. Can you please address that and tell me what the breakdown of that 585000 is? Yeah, if you look at it, that's exactly what we used to have on the revenue of the town side and it's everything you've listed on there but one of the things we need to look at is if the enterprise fund is truly a business uh, right now the charge roughly let's call it town buildings and school buildings approximately hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of EDUs this is a business the town does not tax them and does not do a pilot program which are perfectly legal so it is a subsidized fund of the general government because we are not taxing on there. Uh, also, assessing does work, treasure collector's office does work, legal does work, also labor does work, myself, and um, it used to be that you accounted for those, and we're not, and it's very difficult. And Guy will be the first one to tell you that he's going to, he's going to want explanations for everything, but if it's truly a business, you can't have the general fund doing work for the enterprise fund and absorbing those costs. And that's where we need to, we need to figure it out. At one time, it was close to a million dollars. Uh, I don't think we'll reach that by, by any stretch. But there needs to be some sort, of, uh, some sort of really working with it as an enterprise fund. And that's what the Department of Revenue is also coming in to do. They're not necessarily doing an audit of it. They're not going to tell us every single cent of the retained earnings, where it came from, or anything like that. They're going to tell us best practices and how it should function. Uh, one thing, and I've looked it up from other towns, the Department of Revenue will tell you, is that it's impractical to account for every minute out of an office that is addressed to, uh, to the enterprise fund. You could, you could theoretically do it, but it's not practical. So we're going to have to make let's say, um, informed decisions as to the time of usage. But you, we will not track every single, every single minute and every single hour. It's just, it just doesn't work. The 585 right now? No, the 585 is the benefits portion, also the workers' comp, also the, uh, the insurance as well. Uh, there's no, there's no, none of the legal fees in there. There's none of the, um, none of the time of any of the different departments. Yeah, I would say you'd probably, if you were to do it in the, um, as a, as a, the true enterprise fund, which was, um, you, you would see a, you'd see an increase in that. Yeah. And Guy and I will arm wrestle over that. Well, here's, here's, here's something. <laughs> building this, building the sewer enterprise budget really has to be built expenses first, because it doesn't matter to us if it's EDUs or flow rates or whatever it is the, all that is going to be based on what it cost operated basically so uh, you know I mean I, I know that the EDUs in my opinion have been have been uh, understated for a number of years and now they're going up according to this one way or the other but what gets what, I, what I'm going to going to say and, and this is bothers me last year we it may be how we term things I, I don't mind a reserve and I don't mind a reserve for 
capital additions. But I don't like the term capital additions because because last year we got into a little bit of an issue with this truck, whether it had to come back before town meeting, whether it shouldn't. And um, I think to be on the safe side, we need to address that question this year. And maybe these are reserves for capital, but they're not specific to any item. And if we're going to get capital, we'll have to come back to town meeting to get the money from the reserve to fund that capital item. So that way we're not double dipping, but at the same time, we're using a reserve, the reserve logic as opposed to just saying for capital and then it's an expense item and nobody, you know, we, well, we get a truck and you know what I mean? I, there's, there's an openness to this. Uh, this 200,000 may not cover what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So really what it is, is a reserve fund. You're saving money to get to a point where you can pay for something. I, I think in the long term, and, and again, a CIP or a crop improvement plan will, will address that because you'll have millions. As an example, if it's going to take us $12 million to rehab an area, then we have to figure out how to pay for that. So we'll probably do some bonding or whatever, and that'll all be in the capital improvement plan. Right. But I know that I have some, and, and to me, as I explained to me, capital <coughs> expenses were things that were greater than $25,000 because capital expenses have to go out to bid. So I know that I have to do my clarifiers. It's fifty thousand a piece. I've got to put that out to bid. So that's why I come out of capital. Anything short of that comes out of the budget. So if it's going to be something for ten thousand, I budget it. If it's going to be something greater than twenty-five, then I have to I put it in the capital additions so I can put it out to bid. So that's how I'm appro approaching it. So I, I don't understand know if that's that, proper but, or not proper. But that's where we failed yeah. last year. That's where the problem okay. came in. Is, is yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. By our own bylaws, we have a separate definition of capital as well, which requires certain certain items to be brought before town meeting. So what we'd have to do is go through every single item that we're listing on there and determine whether it is an actual capital item. Also, probably most likely for, for clarification, the name, the line name probably shouldn't say capital on there. That's right. So. I think it needs to be a reserve or something yeah. along that line. Because I yeah, do have a reserve line. I'm sorry, Derek. A reserve line. I have that, but that's for I reserve that for emergency. So maybe we can put the whole thing in reserve. Yeah. yeah. Right. So okay. Thank you. I didn't. Uh, yeah, because if he as a reserve, then also as part of that, he would go before the uh, the the sewer commissioners to request a transfer out of that for a purchase. So it does. It I think it keeps with the uh, with the openness of it, so people have to see what's being expended. But also, it doesn't hamstring uh, the operations of the, the department. All right. Any more questions on sewer before we move on? If, just, just, can I just follow up on one? Um, <coughs> so the, as far as the transfer of funds, you know, for the allocation of the administrative expenses, what about the sewerage expenses on the, on the, on the town buildings? We we pay we are billed okay. just like a resident like and we pay the bill. Okay. So how we operate back to them is, is governed by this and we have to be careful because we can't really invoice them. I don't believe that's the way we do it according to the enterprise accounting. Yeah, there's some you know, there's some real <laughs> iffy things. There's sometimes municipal maintenance some of our mechanics have to work on the uh, the equipment for water pollution control and it just makes sense at the even though they're a separate business we do understand we're working for the town of Wareham and the residents and those that are you know using the using the sewer as well so it gets that's where things can get you know a little a little I, I'm gonna say say a goofy word or something so I'll say a little confusing Let's move on so we can move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. You want to start? Thank you very much for joining us. Um. Thank you. I'm Kevin Walsh, an interim uh, police chief and uh, administrative assistant Cassandra Cassidy. Um, you have the budget figures before you, I guess, and the expenses. We, um, I, I want to start out by saying with the police department, we have a theme that, that since my tenure started uh, a very short time ago as interim, I started November 29th as interim. But the theme is going to be back to, back to basics. We're, the police department will go back to basics on, on the budget. And um, what I mean by that, I'll put some things on the table and, and I don't want to put anybody under the bus but I will put things on the table we we realize at the police department that big spending is over 
we have the reputation of being spenders that that's ended uh, we're gonna we operate within the means we operate you know, on a daily basis and uh, it, it's just the basic daily basis and we're even having a hard time with that we rely on grants a lot of a lot of grants are out there we actively s daily seek grants and we are being awarded grants we have to maintain operational um, objectives to receive the grants so it's a, it's a two-way street there but we are relying on and receiving grants we've ended things like jet skis jet skis they were transported back to Boston that Boston Motorsports has the jet skis they're gone Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> things like that are gone okay um, ATVs uh, we, we had ATVs on weekends uh, at various places gone the ATV is still here but the the overtime expenditures are cut on that we're not putting them out every weekend in, in different areas um, uh, the the massive warrant sweeps have to be on hold for now we realize that the uh, tra a traffic unit no longer we, we can't do that and the, and the two cruises that we have assigned to a traffic unit have to be put back into the fleet because of the situation we have with the fleet uh, the motorcycles is, is, is another issue that's on hold for now the substation and onset we're going to not man that with overtime we're going to man that with um, seasonal officers and put a patrolman in charge of it I hope things like that it, while it doesn't add up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands <coughs> of dollars it does it does add up and contribute to the fact that what I the fact of what I'm telling you is it's back to basics and I'm, I'm going to interrupt here just to say all of those items that you just mentioned are perfectly appropriate tools for law enforcement a lot of them well used in a town that has waterfront and a lot of brush I think they were great ideas they just weren't appropriate to be funded at the time that we were trying to do them it's really hard to say we're struggling we have to make cuts and then that's what the public perception is so I, I really myself would hope that someday we get to see those things come back fully funded and fully operational because they're, they're valid tools. But as you said, back to basics now, so thank you. And if I can real quick, at the, when the budget was finally passed, I think it was June, uh, a, a member of the finance committee had come up to me afterwards and he said, he said, can we do it on this budget for the police department? And my answer was no, that is not a real budget. I think it was shocking to them, and they thought that I had lost hope. I haven't lost hope, but the reality is what we are budgeting this department doesn't work. I know we the, the, will look at the overtime and such. We don't have enough staff, so we're paying with overtime. We can't afford to send people to the academy, which is one of the things that we're requesting to do starting this year. So at some point, we have to get out of the downward spiral and realize as long as we're we're doing the best we can with the monies we have to do something for the safety of this town and uh, you'll notice there's if you look at your historical there was a request if an FY 2015 request you'll also notice the my admin for the 2015 and it is higher than the FY 14 numbers and I am standing behind that because that's what we need from this department to, to not just continue running, but to, to, to run. We're going to have uh, at some point some, some of the salary increases. We've had people retire and we can't afford to hire new people. So you know, I would ask that we really take a look at this because I want the finance committee to understand this budget and, and see it as I do. So I'll turn it back over to, to uh, Chief Chief Walsh and I appreciate your indulgence to say that. On on that same line, I I want to say that the cuts that we've made, uh, or or the the things that we're not doing anymore, doesn't make us believe me doesn't make us a better and stronger police force, and that's that's the downside of that. It it, it does weaken us, but we will never be weakened to the point that Wareham the citizens of Wareham suffer. And so. I, I, while I realize that we have to go down on things, I, I don't want to say that we've cut that because it's so extra that we positively don't need it and it was never useful to begin with. We realize that it's, like I said, back to basics. Um, with, with that in mind, 
I don't like the fact that all non-mandatory training has been, uh, we stopped that, all man non-mandatory training. Any extra training has been stopped until at least July 1st. Um, we still have mandatory training that we have to do. We have to do firearms qualification in the spring. Uh, we have to have um, certain EMD training has to be done. Certain dispatcher training has to be done. We will stick to the mandatory and we will work from July 1st on and, and, and see what we have. But um, that's what I mean. It doesn't, it doesn't strengthen us, but we'll get by for now. Um, you know, the overtime costs, as Mr. Sullivan said, the overtime costs are, are, are really damaging to us. But we're down on manpower. We're down six uh, people right now with a seventh probably on the way. He's going to be hired by the FBI. So we're, we're down with retirements. Uh, I had two sergeants retire. That pulls when sergeants retire. I have to fill the sergeant spots. It pulls up from the, uh, you know, makes empty slots on the, on the patrol side, which is the last place we want to make um, any cuts is the patrol side because we still provide the service to the, to the public. We're down, um, and I, I, please don't take this as a woe is me speech. I'm just giving you, the, giving you what's going on. Um, the detectives, we're down to two detectives right now and an investigator. We should be at least at four, probably six, with the, with the problems that we have in Wayham, the investigations. And, and I have to give kudos to the, to the, to the guys that are down there. That, that, that are working their butts off every day because crimes are being solved, drug raids are being done. Uh, we're networking with other, other departments and, and getting things done. As you see in the papers, there's always something being done. And with that, the, the, the workload is, is still there. In 2013, we responded to 52, well, there were 52,504 calls for service received at the police station. That's 1,000 calls a week, ranging from a barking dog, cat in the tree, to a murder. So that takes into all, all, the, uh, all the calls that we received. There's over 3,000 EMS calls that we responded to. We're the first responding units to an EMS call. 537 accidents. Uh, 1,528 arrests made by the Wayham Police Department. We're known as, uh, un unfortunately, Brockton with trees. <laughs> Plymouth is Brockton by the sea. We're Brockton with trees. We're, we're the busiest town south of uh, south of Brockton, and we still we still put up the numbers. Even though our internal numbers are down, we put up the numbers. And it's it's funny, but criminals don't care about our budget too much. So, 2,570 incident reports. That, that's just incident reports. You know, um, my car was damaged. Uh, my mailbox was damaged. To um, reports that, that that might not be solved, but the officer has to take a report. On top of all this, we have events that we have to we have to um, make sure that there's public safety at, at events. And this year, I, I see uh, Claire Smith is is in attendance. <laughs> we have this will be without a doubt, and she can attest to this is that this will be Wayham's historically largest event year. Uh, you put that in your budget, right, Claire? You're going to cover all those costs for the overtime for the police. We are certainly doing our very best. This will be, this will be the most events Wayham has had, the biggest events, and probably the best events. But it, it will be a busy time for us, and um, therefore we, we positively need every seasonal officer that we can get to, to, uh, to help out with that. So... Uh, with that, we, we had over 60 events last year. So we're adding events on top of that. And like I said, I'll end with, I, we realize as bad as our budget numbers are, especially with the police department, the public still says, okay, your budget's, the budget's tough. Yeah, whatever. I need you to respond to my house because this is happening. <laughs> and I need you to, re to, to respond to these incidents, which we do and, and, and we will and we do. So... With that, um, also with um, the, the overtime, the, the way to cut down the overtime, I believe, is, is we need to hire more people to cut down the overtime costs. We're down, like I said, we're down almost seven people right now. It's, it's probably going to get worse. We actually have this uh, 800 state troopers being hired. 
we believe we have two or three officers that are on that list. We could lose more. We're looking at losing more people. So that's going to cost more overtime. We, uh, I, I believe that we need to hire more full-time officers to, to, try to, to try to cut down the overtime. Court overtime is, is, is what it is. With 1,500 arrests, you're going to be going to court a lot. We've been working with the court. I've met with uh, people at the court several times now. In the last few months, we're trying to cut down officers going to court. Do you really need this witness? Do you really need that witness? So, you know, we have a certain amount of people um, summons to court on a minor <coughs> offense. Can we cut out two of those three people? So we're trying everything we can on that end. But court is a major is a major factor, and we cut down court costs. That means we cut down arrests in Wayham. That's not a good thing to do, and it's not a uh, it's actually not even possible so I think that's it right now we have you know we have overtime broken down in, into the different areas uh, the expenses are all broken down some of them I hate to use the term but it is what it is on some of them you know fuel costs is high but it's that's what it is and other ones, we've gone line by line. We sat down with uh, Mr. Sullivan, went line by line, and made uh, cuts here and there, and argued for other things. But I'm going to tell you, uh, the cuts, more cuts came than, than increases, I can tell you that. Um, that's it for now, if you want to add anything. Thanks. Uh, Jeff had a question. Yeah, if, I, if I'm new, so if I can just maybe just get, a, just get an idea. Um, you're running three shifts uh, of how many per shift? There are six. The minimum staffing is, is six people. That'd okay. be five officers. There's four sectors, uh, a station officer, and one sergeant. That's the minimum on a shift. Okay. And then during the day, you would have the detective sergeant probably on hand and the lieutenants, or do they take shifts? No, they, they're assigned to that. We only have, actually, we're down lieutenant. We have one lieutenant right now. So we have a detective sergeant, a detective um, splits between nights and days, and then we have, uh, the, the, you know, the okay. shift The shift sergeant runs the shift. Okay, so the, the lieutenant counts in minimum manning? No. Min oh, it doesn't? No, he doesn't. No. How about the so sergeant counts? Sergeant counts. Okay. And the, um, the, do you run an impact shift? No, we don't. But we'd like to, but we don't. Okay, and d d so what is an impact, shift? impact shift is what you would you you know how the typical uh, is say eight to five or eight to four maybe a six to two shift yeah or six okay. PM, your busiest time, busiest time. Okay. yeah so and, and then you have some you have a group there during the change of shift so that there's always people out yeah we actually wouldn't have the manpower right now to do that uh, if we had the manpower I'd love to negotiate that with a contract but right now we don't have the manpower to do that and maintain the other shifts right. Okay, and uh, what about lateral transfers? Or is is um, it's instead of the academy? We took two lateral transfers, I believe, uh, a year and a half ago, from Falmouth. Um, we, we that is something we look at. We haven't. Uh, you have to understand as well. The police contract is going on to its third year in arrears. We so uh, we're not exactly attractive without a. Uh, mm -hmm without that and we've had more requests for lateral transfers out than in okay yeah. how about this now how does seasonals play in with the contract with the contract they're not part of the bargaining contract um, certain aspects of their duties are right but but they they're not um, uh, covered by the by I mean the you use contract. a seasonal in January you're gonna be in trouble right correct yeah I mean so there's some there's some gray area on right you could bring them in in April or bring them in in May or we haven't been able if I, uh, I'm sorry to we've actually been holding off till July 1 of every year we don't even have them you'd want them in April May to get them running but because of the budgets we've not been able to do that so you effectively have seasonal starting on the first day of July of probably the busiest weekend of the summer yeah uh, I really I looked at it and you'll notice I cut the request down uh, about approximately 33,000 to 90,000 we if it weren't simple economics, we should have that those additional thirty-four thousand on there to have them hired starting in May, maybe even late April to get ready for all the activities that we're going to have forward. But 
You know, we simply can't. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I was just trying to get an idea of how of the department. Thanks. Those are all good questions. They're excellent. Bonnie. I was just hoping you could run through these uh, just numbers of personnel here. I'm, I'm counting up. Are these listed personnel what we what you really need, what we want to hire at this point? I'm listing, um, you're saying detectives. I've got three here, lieutenants two. Sergeant six and 33 patrolmen. Is that what that's we're what we looking have, for? That's what, that's we, what we have, have, but not what we're looking for. Well, the lieutenant's position, we only have one right now. Right. Okay. So, but we would like to fill that position. Um, and we currently only have a detective sergeant and a detective. So, and we're looking to put a third detective in there. We have um, an officer now who works with the DEA task force. He's assigned to the detective unit as an investigator, but we would like to bring him up to detective. That would cut off, cut up some of his overtime because now he gets paid for overtime, and we do get reimbursed for a lot of that that he does with the DEA. But um, if he gets called out in the middle of the mm -hmm. night, kind of thing, we have to pay him for overtime. But if he was a detective, we wouldn't have to pay him for overtime. And that's one of those moves that would help but hurt. Yeah. So in other words, it, it would help us to put another detective on. But we lose that association with the DEA. We lose that that um, that that chance for um, uh, uh, forfeiture forfeiture money, seizure money from the federal government. We we lose that, and we lose that networking. But we have to think of weigh him first, and we have to think of what's going on in the budget. And so to bring him back would be the prudent thing. Bring him back, put him on the regular line as a detective, but it would add to the um, to the salary a little bit. So these numbers are actually positions that we want to fill, but not necessarily filled at this point. Yeah, some of them on there. We also have one officer that's out on um, 111F that will not be coming back. I wondered what that 111F was. Yeah, 111F is, when you look at it, it's essentially, think of it as the police workers' compensation. Okay. Uh, we've we're changing the manner in which we handle it it's uh in order to be placed on 111f now would they must uh, they must be certified uh, by maya and the uh and medical doctors that it is a uh, it is jo the job related and such before we will place them on 111f uh it's going to save some issues because once somebody's placed on 111f it is um near impossible to have them removed from that so okay the 10,000 is uh we always have to cover a certain portion of it before the insurance will kick in so that's what we've we've budgeted for part of that okay thank you um i just want to go back to that last um subject that you were talking about with the investigator and the dea um because i know you were saying it makes more sense for the department and for the budget but you're losing out on connections um, last year we had a lot of talk Derek about the department heads finding revenues mm -hmm. I mean it may not make more sense budgetarily if we're getting <coughs> revenue in, and I don't know how that's accounted for for money that comes in that way I, I miss I coughed and missed it so. so he had said that we get we get something we get some benefit from cooperating with DEA yes. You're right. Forfeiture, forfeiture. Money get. Um, so and that is, goes into a federal equity sharing account and we're restricted on how we can spend that money but um, so that doesn't come into I just budget questions it doesn't come into the town budget it comes into the police department and you have some discretionary funds there too exactly. okay yes. um, which and you're restricted on how you <coughs> can spend that so it's not like you can spend that on salaries exactly. obviously and, and you know some that would be one of those things that would probably be the first thing we'd re-implement. Re okay. But at this time and in this situation, we realize that we need the manpower well, with us. We don't like to always be seen as cut, 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 because there are some cuts that don't make sense. Right. If there are cuts that you're cutting because you have to, but you're losing this <laughs> access or service or, or funding, really, in this case, um, it it's a con becomes a concern right. because then you lose the ability to go back and get it. So just trying to figure out how that works. Is that a significant number? Do we know what that is? Um, 
It, it, it just it varies. <coughs> so if we make a big bust and we get the we don't get the money directly, it goes certain, into the pool. We get a certain percentage of that. Okay. Um, it depends on how much our town was involved, so it's always different. Um, but you know, sometimes we could get four or five thousand dollars okay, in a whack, so and and if if he's out there more often, that's more money that we get in. So. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, Bonnie. I'm just going to bring up the elephant in the room over here. Um, this. I'm glad someone else will do that, not just me. <laughs> the, I thought I already did, but. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday buyback and the sick uh, sick leave buyback. I mean, they're big numbers, and they've been an issue for a long time. Um, I mean, is is some of your overtime issues in staffing causing them to buy back some of their sick leave and their holiday pay more? Actually, what I've seen is the sick leave buyback, changing it down was the worst thing we could have done. Really? Yes. The, um, they went from, if you check, it was approximately $35,000 worth of sick time when it was, when it was the 100% hundred, uh, hundred I believe, or around the 75, yeah, and that cost us about 75 to 80,000. Now they're using anywhere between 160 to 180,000 dollars worth of sick time. Now multiply that by 1.5 times, and you have what it's actually cost us. It was a bad move. Okie dokie then. Thank you. So when you do the contracts next time, you'll know this, right? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I've probably just played my hand right there, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I looked at it from a budgetary-wise, I would say it's a bad move. Now, we've, we've put, implemented that in with all the contracts, so we might be stuck on that because when we implemented it it was based off what everybody else had done but uh, when we're in the type of situation we have with low staffing it is better for us to have them than not than them taking their sick time okay thank you thank you and I think that's an important point for for us and for the public to understand because that becomes an issue I know it's an issue at my workplace it's a sick time policy use it or lose it well use it or lose it there's a certain amount of people that are going to use it don't use it and get paid for it, some portion of it, is what Derek is saying, is actually making smart budgetary sense. It kind of goes against the wrong way, but we're not asking them to just give the town their sick time. We're buying it from them. So I was sitting on those finance committees where we argued that it was a terrible number to look at, but when you're comparing it to what the reality is, I guess we'll live with it. Well, it, then, too, is there, there were some shocking numbers when, you know, an employee left yeah, and bought, bought what they back. had accrued mm -hmm. yeah. was like, wow, okay. That was fine if they were never going to leave or, you know, whatever. But uh, when, when they left, it was like, wow, but, but really? But then I guess the, the contrasting number is what they saved us in overtime. Mm -hmm. So that's how you're going to look at it. So um, anybody else? Go ahead, Tom. Um, I, I'd like to ask a series of questions about the 911. If I have a call on 911 on a fire, where does that call go to? The Wareham Police Department. And we transfer it to the fire department. And EMS? 911 comes to us. And a robbery? 911 comes to us, yeah. Harbor. So Every, you take all the 911 calls? Everything. In... Where? Even the 911 calls that ask if a school is open tomorrow. We take every 911 call. Can we charge those? That's just <laughs> and is there, is there a similar group that uh, fire departments have? Yeah. What do you mean a similar group? I mean, they take, take emergency calls? No, when we receive a 911 call. You take it for the whole town. Right, we tra and, and we, transfer it, we transfer it to, you know, uh, stay on the line. I'll hook you with the fire department right now. Boom. You don't have to call again. You know, you get hooked right to the fire department. Okay. Um, grants. It, it, it looked like in uh, um, fiscal year 13, you got about $400,000 worth of grants. Is that, is that a realistic number? That's correct. And Lieutenant Walsack is here. He, he uh, what did it, what applies did it, for the grants. He might be able to answer any wait, specific Explain grant a grant questions. to me. Uh, it depends on what we... We examine uh, any possible error we can for <coughs> Thank you. And uh, 
expensive. The grant might be anything for uh, emergency management matters. It uh, could be for... 911. Uh, 911, emergency medical dispatching. And I might add on the 911, we not only take every single solitary emergency call for the town of Wareham, we also take down every other town's drop-down calls that they don't catch. So we'll get calls from Middleborough, any town. If their 9-1 goes down, we're, we're grabbing that, that call. And I can say that during the last hurricane, Middleborough's 9-1-1 went down. We took all of Wareham's calls plus Middleborough's calls. We uh, uh, dispatches literally answering hundreds and hundreds of calls. Nine one one. The That's grants also one. cover a click at a ticket, um, patrols, the uh, underage drinking uh, grants. Uh, OUI. Uh, the OUI patrols that you see advertised and you see guys out doing. <coughs> you know, a lot of the people in the public think that oh boy, they have enough money to send guys out looking for um, people not wearing the seatbelts, but they need this. That's grant patrols. We're not putting out anything extra unless it's a grant patrol. And and there's a pretty good latitude as to where that money goes. Did they ever come back in and and check to make sure it was spent specifically for what the we, grant yes was? we have been audited yes yeah. Well, there's tight control. There's very tight control oh, of the yeah. state because it's run through the executive office of public safety, and they they uh, demand monthly reporting, which Cassandra takes care of. And the grants come from private. No, a lot of them, most of the ones we've been getting have been coming from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, insurance companies? No. In fact, Kevin and I, uh, Chief and I talked last night, and we have an intern from Mass Maritime this time, and we're currently looking for every available grant dollar we can. That's one of his assignments through, through private companies. Maya has grants. Uh, you know, that, that's insur that our insurance carrier. They have grants, but most of the grants come from. EOPS, the uh, correct, correct, the state. And are you are they running as as much in fourteen as they did in were in thirteen? They pretty much do. Yeah. They they pretty much they're pretty consistent. Yeah. And we attend every every possible grant meeting we can with the Commonwealth. So our the Wareham Police Department's always out there on the forefront, trying to grab those dollars. I mean, we're actively seeking a grant right now to to ha hold a citizens police academy. That, that's that's how uh, how much we rely on grants. We know that we can't afford it budget-wise, but we'd love to do it. The public loves it. We seek a grant for it, and we're actively seeking one now. That's for me. Just, just one last on on. Um, I'm just was doing out some numbers here I, it looks like you almost have on any given day I, um, you've got to cover vacations almost three people per day are on separate vacation days if they call in a request a vacation day right and then if it can be filled by overtime it's filled yeah because I, I mean I don't I don't know the vacation rates but just assuming and then to so your minimum manning is already knocked with um, with vacation usually on a day on a daily basis and, and I'm I gotta tell you I'm coming from another town I listen to the scanner and and I'm just amazed at the number of calls and I don't know what you know I don't know if it's the highways or what you've if, listened you know. to this town yeah oh yeah that, that uh, amazement will wear off yeah. <laughs> you'll get used to it yeah uh, it just it, it's just a huge number in population wise right yeah minutes. right so okay thank you and like I said I, I just I, I want to end with that staying on that is I just I want to compliment the guys on the police force because w w with all the, the hardships that we have they're working with us on, on the budget and they s we still put out we still make the we still produce we still um you know we, we we still are enforcing the law as best we can with what we have and and they're doing a phenomenal job so i have one question so with this budget what you've decided is if 2015, you'll rehire what you have to, and that's the figure that's the minimum that you can right. will be doing. We'd love to do that refer as a minimum. Rehire. How many more? Uh, 20. No, <laughs> re refer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to hire. I would like to bring it up to, to full staff, and and even even up to 10 more. To 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 reduce costs. 
to bring our detective division to what it's supposed to be and to what this town deserves and to provide services to what this with what this town does deserve like i said i started out with the cuts that we made those should be things that we're doing on a daily basis that they weren't with the exception of one or two weren't frivolous we'd like to have enough people to do that and to to provide the best service we can and that and the overtime and the, the vacation won't really change with the new with high, what you've got in 2015 but with the full staff of 10 do you think that will cut down on overtime and you it won't it won't impact the vacations they take well, it would it, it would drastically cut down on the overtime, I believe, if we had a full complemented staff plus plus the uh, people, without a doubt. And and you actually could save on vacation because if you're just if you're just manning with the minimum staff and you don't have anybody else on there, anybody that's sick or on vacation is now being covered by overtime. If you have the ability to put an extra person on that, let's say, or keep that moving forward, now you're cutting down on the overtime and you're doing things such as directed patrols or do it getting more work done out of there. Um, you know, the tough decision we have and. Uh, and I feel terrible because I'm holding up the chief on this, is the Academy, is this, what, March? Yes. March and March there are three 31st. spots available for us. And I haven't approved it yet because I don't know if we can afford it at the end of the day. And it's penny wise and pound foolish, but we cannot go over budget this year. So that's, a, and this is what, what I'm trying to say is we're, we are in a, a deep spot with this. So uh, I know... At the end of the day, I, I'm searching for other funds besides the $500,000 that's had to been cut to try and bring three more officers onto the onto the patrol. It'll take a while before they're in effect, maybe October, I think. And um, if they win the academy now, they'd be street ready October 1st. Oh, and that can cut down on some of the overtime. But it's it's almost like if you don't have the funds to repair your roof things are the water leaking through it's damaging the floor now and geez uh, you should have just repaired your roof i don't have the money so this is where we're at and every time he says it, I, I i cringe because we have the three spots in the academy that they're tough to get the spots are tough to get you have to get them well in advance there has to be psychologicals it has to be this everything has to be done to put somebody in and um we have them waiting we have the spots we're all set for them, and uh, there could be three empty seats for the so waiting you, people. You have the candidates then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there's no psychological test for my position. <laughs> right. no. Bonnie, hold hold on just a minute, Larry. No, oh. the, the grants. Grants for that? Yeah. Not really. There's, there used to be cop grants out there, but those are tricky grants. You end up paying in the long run on those. And when when the grant is over. Now you eat those. You eat those. They look good in the beginning. They look really great. But then all of a sudden, when you get that final uh, bill, hey, listen, Grant's leaving. They're yours. <coughs> so I, I, I don't think that's the um, financially prudent thing to do right now with that type of grant. Tom, hold on a minute. Bonnie had a comment. I, I just wanted to follow along with, with Derek's plan, make sure I'm understanding what's going on here. When you change the request to the administration here, you said, I mean, so you're basing this on if you can get, <clears throat> you're increasing the regular salary line item, getting rid of part-time, reducing seasonal, and reducing overtime. That is your game plan, is to have more full-time officers to make it work. Am I correct? Yeah, the game plan is to bring, bring them on board and okay. have more full-time officers, which tells you why it's driving me crazy, what our budget is like this year, and we don't have extra funds to... To put towards putting these uh, these folks into the academy, okay. so. I just want to make sure I understood those numbers that that's what it was interpreting to me. Yeah, if you look at it, you'll see what the salary is versus the FY fourteen. Mm. Then the seasonal again, like I said, I've cut down on the seasonal, the overtime. We still I've brought it up versus the FY fourteen, but still less than than what's what's probably needed. I mean. If we were to go forward, you'd probably look at about another um, another three to four hundred thousand dollars easily, 
into this budget right here but part of that's for if you if you had a whole bunch of new employees or lateral transfers you could go through one of the other items I think we're we're, we're all missing um, is the uh, the police cruisers now we've got I've if you've seen I've lowered it to a hundred thousand dollars so that's potentially a lease for mm -hmm. for the units for three years but just remember at the end of the third year those units are shot they are effectively useless this would potentially we've worked the numbers and such provide us with five units um, with the other three that we've had ordered and are being put together that, that would be eight of the newer units but again we're we're not doing what what was uh, what we're supposed to i think the um uh, try to remember what capital planning had put together they they had an annual number for the cruiser replacement i thought it was relatively yeah uh it was in the double digits though i thought so that right so that's that's one of the things and um we know we have to get more on there and I would have to go to the, uh, we'd have to have a separate article to actually purchase them through the lease, but we're building it into the budget so people see what the true cost is of this of this department. Uh, I think the 440 was representative of what it would be to replace the ones that need replacing. So, um, you know, I'm going to provide you, and uh, um, Cassandra had already given it to me, and you don't have any packets, will be the updated mileage. Of, uh, of the cruisers. Our main fleet, I think, is approximately between a, 120 to 140,000 miles for the, road, for the cars that are on the road every day. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Yeah, what do we have? Uh, we got the uh, 126, 132, 122, 126. I've got 151, 166. The two traffic units that they've brought into the regular patrol, they're helping out 31,000, 32,000. And uh, we have one other charger with uh, 42,000 miles on it. And that's because we were able to, uh, through the insurance company, get a brand new one that was wrecked. So. Tom? The um, overtime is the total money spent for the person while he was overtime. It's the, the real overtime cost is the premium, which is 50%. So a third of this number is the premium cost that you're paying. Is that correct? Uh, I think if you're thinking about it, you have the person, let's say they're on vacation or are going out sick. You're paying 100% of them. Now you're bringing in somebody else at the 1.5. So it's a, I don't want people to think it's a point five. It's but a, they've it's earned the vacation. I mean, you're going to pay that anyway. Right. You got but you're filling their shift now because you're already paying that person to be out. If you look at here, we don't break down their shifts, but we don't break down uh, the vacation and such out because that's all part of their regular salary. But if their position is being filled, that position is being filled by, on overtime. I think what's happening here is a is a difference between semantics. I understand what he's saying, which is the the cost of the overtime from an accounting standpoint is the premium, because all regular hour dollars go into the regular hours. But what he's trying to say is he, he's actually talking about theoretically what they're doing. So that number, I guess, what I'm asking then is in the 200 or whatever it is, uh, 2015 473,592 says overtime is that an entire is an entire person replacing someone in overtime is that the amount for that it, it would be court added into that it would okay. be uh, other things added into that right but there's some of that is reimbursed if it's done for is that part of the if they're doing a detail no, no, details are separate. Okay. Totally separate. Details are separate. Yeah. I think I think that number, Tom, is representing an entire person. Mm -hmm. But that's okay because that's the way they do their budget. So I'm okay with that, but I understand what you're saying. It, it isn't as bad as it shows. This is, is it, it's an accounting thing. That I see. It's an accounting thing. If you, when you pay somebody overtime, if, if you're doing payroll and you, you have someone who gets 41 hours, you're going to pay him 41 hours of regular time and 0.5 or well, you're gonna play one hour of 0.5 times so that's what what it is mm. that's it's just an accounting thing okay. and 
and we're we're gonna skew up the whole thing when we start playing accounting here. Yeah, it would be, it's and a lot of breakdown. <laughs> one final one. What is out there uh, from a technology point of view that can make the department operate more efficiently and at a lower cost? Robocop? I mean, uh, uh, things. Uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> items that are very expensive. Yeah, no, I mean, very if, expensive had, items. if you had the, the money to make an investment, you make the investment, and the savings <laughs> over three years offsets the cost you the investment you made. What, what's out there? Uh, technological advances in computer software, things like that. Um, the mobile data terminals have been great for the police officers and the cars. That's, that's, we, we have the top of the line mobile, mobile data terminals that um, the officer basically has an, has an office in his car. Things like that. It, and, and with more advances, but they cost a lot of, things cost money. They, it's, it's a lot of money. I, yeah, I was just saying, if you had, you said you're going to put money into efficiency. Uh, tases are, are part of that. Um, things like that. Tools to make the officer on the street to make his, to streamline his job and to, uh, and to stay with the current. Video cameras? Video town. cameras would be great. Video cameras would be great. They're very expensive, like I said. Throughout town, uh, yeah, that, that's another lots. issue. That's yeah, that's another issue that. Well, it, it, mean, it, it could. It could. It, it, I mean, have you gotten together and said, okay, this is, this is, these are things we would spend our money on if we could put it into things that would make our lives. It, at this time, I have to be honest with you, it's. What can we do today to no, I, keep the boat going? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We keep with we staying afloat but and keep the water. It's also it's a here. very good time to borrow money, and you, potentially if you could make a justification that said over over a period of, over a three or four year horizon, yeah. this investment will pay for itself. It, it's certainly things to so look we into. We ought to know what the heck that's all about. Certainly worth looking into, of course. Maybe we could get our own TV show too. That would be cool. Then we get the jet skis back and they can follow us around. Um, I'd like to thank you very much. Oh, we got one more? Okay. One more question. On the educational incentive, um, that doesn't account for the um, sending someone to the academy. What's that? The oh. educational incentive? That's the Quinn bill. Yeah. Oh. No, no, it's, uh, not, it's not. Please don't use that term because that's not what it is. It's actually in it. Th that term is dead. This The, the state nix that term what this is is when they get when they go on and get ed education as they go along this is part of that it's a contractual issue yep. at this point so that's what it is it's just part of their pay based on the amount of education they've gone on to get after i guess after they become a police officer right that's all but it, uh, to answer your question it doesn't affect the, uh, the um it doesn't help right no, no. Actually, I can explain it to you later, Marilyn, but kind of simplistically, we want more educated police officers. Back when this came out, probably, I think it was the 1970s, I have my flyer here, I don't remember all of it, but when it came out, um, there were civil rights issues, there were a lot of technical legal issues that police officers um, were making arrests, but they were kind of, things were slipping through the cracks, and there was lack of sensitivity, so they felt that we should give some incentive if they get college credits and do further studies. And so every degree that they get uh, for the associates, for the bachelors and beyond, they get <laughs> compensated more. One of the things that we looked at, but it would take more than we can do at the moment, is to actually just make those requirements of the position. Because now, in 2014, people are much more likely to have some kind of degree, have already gone to college. So it could just be part of the, rather than having a separate line item to go through this complicated formula, it could just be part of what you're required to do. Um, but that's the way it was set up in the town. That's how the town voted for it. So that's how we show it on the books. Um, anybody else? Nice to have a local police chief. I would like to thank you for a honest, open presentation, um, for not making us feel guilty, for trying to work with you to get the most practical budget that we can. And I just want to throw something out there for discussion purposes, and this comes maybe dangerously close to day to day, but it's, it's part of the bigger picture. And I had warned Larry to warn Derek that this is something that I'm going to be asking townwide. And it comes a little bit into pushback. It's much more relevant when we look at the schools and the school budgets and what they're mandated to do. We are being told as a community that we have to do a lot of things. We have to do it in the sewer department. We have to do it in the schools. 
Um, and we don't have the funds to do all the things that the federal government and the state thinks that we have to do. And then we have an obligation to our citizens for what we have to do to provide services. So it's not our job on the Finance Committee to decide that. That's the Board of Selectmen who've now left and missed my beautiful little speech here. Um, but I want to start that dialogue. So I just want to get a sense from you. Will you get 52,000 calls? What is your obligation legally? Is that, I'm not sure that's the right term, but what are you mandated to do aside from giving us the best service? And, and we do honestly and sincerely appreciate the service that you give, but what are areas that do we have to respond to dead animals on the side of the road? Or is that something we can do a little bit of pushback and say to the college, gee, I'm sorry, we no longer have someone that can handle that? We, we can do that, and we have done that. Okay. And um, but the people of Wareham expect a service for their tax dollar. And, and, and they're going to take it out on you, and that's not and where we, it should be. It should be coming right. back at this level, because we're going to be making decisions, not just us. Town meeting is going to be making those decisions. But at some point, People are going to have to make those decisions and understand what those costs are. So if we're not going to fund your budget fully that you need to get, people need to understand that. And that's the word I want to get out there. Because I think for many years, people have been hearing, we have no money, we have more, no money. And they've still been getting the services. And they haven't felt, I don't want to say feel pain, but that's not right. But they haven't seen really a whole lot of loss. And at some point, I would, I, I would rather see us sacrifice other areas to get those new patrolmen out there so the long-term picture improves. We may have to hurt for a little bit, and, but people <coughs> need to know that and be aware of that and make those decisions. We just can't keep spending um, the way we used to. And, and I think that comes with a cooperative, uh, educated effort between the citizens and, and all boards. It has to be a cooper cooperative and educated um, uh, decision. Okay. And uh, if, you're not, if you're not educated in the fact that uh, of our numbers and what we have to deal with, then only your thing matters, and it's not going to work that way. So I, I, I totally, totally agree with you. So as there, are there I, anything, when you get a call, do you get a call from outside? Well, obviously, with the 911, we had to respond to Middleborough. That was something that beyond what? What must you do? What, are there any? What am I trying to get to the state requirements, other programs that you feel are um, burdensome um, beyond what you would consider your community policing duties? I'm not sure I understand. I understand what, uh, we have liability. Every time we pick up that phone, it's a liability okay. issue. So maybe I'm thinking more of red tape and um, reporting. Um, do you have to report to <laughs> Is there anybody above Derek and the Board of Selectmen? who you have to report to for programs that you have to implement. You don't have to do so many. Um, uh, I don't think the police is necessarily the one on this one. Every, okay, they're, that's, they're, that's yeah, fine. That's what I'm trying is, to get a handle on. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to. And reporting, yes, they better have everything together because you better believe how many lawsuits come through. And if we haven't properly documented, we're now paying out, mm -hmm. out the funds. So. Okay. They, they have a strong burden on everything to be not only to be uh, safe to, for themselves, for the public, but also then to document it and be professional. So there's, um, and the, the training, some of them are contractual. Some of them, I mean, we want to make sure that they are trained. If they're going to have tasers, that they have the taser training and such. So I think we'll hear from municipal maintenance as more of the mandates that are falling on their okay. head. And that, and that was my expectation, too. And yeah. I'd like to thank you again. And, and what I would like to say is really what a town needs to do, first of all, town government, the most important thing is to protect its citizens. And that is, that's a priority, and you do it well. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just uh, end by saying that um, it, please realize, Finance Committee, that my door is always open. My phone line is always open for you. If there are any operational questions, if you want to come in and talk about something, if there's something you need cleared up, it, it, you know, this, geez, I didn't ask him this. I, I wish I, I wonder what happened with this. Please feel free to, to come see me anytime. Thank you. Just clear it through your chair first. Yeah, it was just, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great idea. We may get back nice. to you with more questions as we have a chance to digest all of this. We will probably invite you back to one of our meetings before that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.